What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Absolutely April. Welcome back for another reality recap. We are doing Married to Medicine. We're on episode 11, and we're talking about the rumor meal. When I say it was a brawl for it all at Quad's house, baby, it went down on Married to Medicine last night. So, before I do that, let me just say, welcome to my channel. I'm absolutely April. I do re reality recaps and other little contents here and there about, you know, spirituality, um, just tips to get through this thing called life. So subscribe to my channel, join my tribe, hit the like, share, subscribe, notification bell, all of that stuff. So you'll be notified about my content uploads and, and everything that I have going on. And if you're new to this channel, again, subscribe. But if you are not new to this channel and you've been, you know, taking in some of my content and liking it, I appreciate you and I thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart. And I want to welcome you back as well. So like I said, let's get into it. We are talking about married to medicine. Oh my goodness. When I say it was a brawl for it all, it was a brawl for it all in this, in, in for married to medicine. Now, you know, married to medicine is no stranger of having a little, um, a little tussle here and there. Cause you know, in the first season, Toya, <laughs> who had, had an issue with Mariah and they had a little uh, tussle. So Toya is coming in season nine with another tussle. So let's talk about it. So it opens back up and it's at the holiday party and Toya is still is arguing with Anila about who ran the, the neighborhood down and whatnot. So it is going back and forth about who messed up the neighborhood, who said what, who was friends with who, is a whole bunch going on at this time. So Dr. Heavenly tells Toya about the rumor that's going on, the rumor of that she slept with someone in the neighborhood. Um, so Heavenly says in her confessional um, that Zaina um, was the name that came up when the rumor about Toya sleeping with someone in the neighborhood. So she, you know, Dr. Heavenly feels like, okay, I'm, you know, even though she ain't seeing total, total eye to eye with Toya, she's seeing like no one should be speaking on someone else's marriage, and especially when they don't have have proof. So Dr. Heavenly is kind of like on, I don't know if I would say team Toya, but she's on team marriage at this point. Um, Toya decides to leave um, since no one is going to confess because she's asking, you know, Anila, you said that. Zaina, you said that. No one is fessing up. Everybody is looking like a deer caught in headlights at this point. So Toya tells Eugene as she's leaving that Anila and her friends started a rumor about her sleeping with someone um, in the neighborhood. So Anila, <laughs> Anila is back on the couch talking about, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. So um, Toya tells, and so at this time, Toya's mom is, I'm not Toya's mom, sorry, Anila's mom is walking up and she was like, what, what's going on? Toya is like, Anila is back there saying, I did, you know, I had sex with someone else's husband and blah, 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 or uh, she was sleeping with someone outside of her marriage. And so Anila's mom is like, no. She's shocked. She's telling Anila, no, no, no. It is a whole big mess going on at the time. So while Anila's mom is telling, is, is reprimanding Anila for, you know, talking about Toya or whatever's going on, Anila, Toya proceeds to tell Eugene. And meanwhile, Audra's over there pulling up their information, trying to see how much they paid for, you know, got for their house or whatnot. So Audra walks over screaming and talking about, I'm a real estate attorney. So Toya is screaming back, but we didn't hire you, B. We didn't hire you. And so <laughs> Dr. Simone, she is on the other side. She's telling Dr. Martin, um, Audra's husband, you might want to go get your, your wife because at this point, Dr. Simone is like, I see where this is going and it ain't about to go nowhere good. So Audra and Toya are screaming back and forth about 
um, hiring or not to hire real estate attorneys. So they're going back and forth. So Dr. Martin tries to get his wife <laughs> and tries to, you know, pull her back and get her to go home. Um, but she is remain, she is determined to argue with Toya. The thing about arguing and going back and forth, you feel like Toya is less than smart or she's, um, you know, or whatever. But Audra, you look just as bad arguing with, like my dad always say, when you argue with a fool, no one can tell the difference when you're arguing with the fool. So why are you sitting up here arguing back and forth with Toya? You know about being a real estate attorney more than Toya does. Don't even argue with her about it. You should have just walked away. But yet again, she did not. And for our entertainment value, I thank you, Audra, for, for not walking away, but I wish you would have, I really do. Um, so as they're arguing, uh, what's her name? Audra is chest bumping Toya, like chest bumping Toya, like, oh, you know, they're going back and forth and they're all up in each other's face. So at that point, Toya mushes her. And if you don't know what a mush is, um, from where I'm from, we call it a mush. Some people say push or mug, I don't know, but we call it mush. So mushing is basically like that. So if that's what happened to poor Audra, she got mushed. And um, <laughs> and so immediately the security swarms in. Audra is swinging. She did like one, two. She did a big. She, I mean, had she connected with Toya, had she had the security night came in when they did, and she connected those punches, Toya would be knocked out. Hear me when I say. She would have been knocked out if y'all remember on Friday when Izell said that she would have gotten knocked out. It would have been lights out for Toya because Audra was bringing force behind those punches. I mean, she was bringing all that Ghana with her when she was punching because Toya would have gotten knocked out. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Argue with me down in the chat or in the comments below because I feel like had the security not swarmed in when they did, Toya would have been probably filing charges on Audra because she would have got she would have got knocked out. So at this point, um, <clears throat> let me make sure. Um, so let's see, Dr. Martin is. At this point, they, he's he's separating his wife and he's telling her to, you know, calm down, come bring back to your center. Don't let them do this. So clearly, Dr. Martin is used to his wife going off because I know Dr. Eugene is. <laughs> so Eugene is, you know, they like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, they're separating everybody. So at this point, um, so at this point, as they're trying to calm each other down, Quad's aunt is over in the back. Like, y'all just disrespecting her house. She did all this to build her house, and y'all just disrespecting her house. So it's like, it's so many, so many things come, going and on at this particular time in different section of this house, honey. So let me just tell you my point of view on the, on the thing. Like, yes, Audra should not have been chest bumping Toya. But I promise you, I feel like Audra started it. Yes, Audra did start it. And Toya mushed her and got the best of her. She, her punches didn't land. Now, and had I been in Audra's shoes, I probably would have been like Monique off of Potomac when, when her and Candace got in the fight. I would have, <laughs> I don't know if I would have been able to rest um not getting her like i i would have i like at that point i would have saw red and it would have took everything within me not to not to get her back because now i feel like you got a one up on me and every time we would be in the same area like i would probably i would probably get you toya i probably would now i mean i've been working on my temper and trying to be more self aware but i'm telling you 
it probably would have been like I would not have rested good until I got you back. Like you are not going to get the upper hand off me. That's just me, and it's pro- it's not right. No, so don't follow behind me. But I'm telling you, that's how it would have been. So Heavenly walks out, and she's talking, and she's telling Damon Daddy that she wasn't in it. She said, "I'm glad I wasn't in it, but Dr. Heavenly, you kind of was because you did let." Toya know what was going on. I get it, but you were you were the you were the flame. You were the flame that sparked that whole fire because you you got the thing popping. So Dr. Heavenly is definitely getting her check for this season because I mean she is working the heck out of this season. Let me tell you. So as they're walking out. Eugene is telling Kawhi what happened and he was like, you know, she, you know, book, you know, bowled up against Toya and, you know, what do you do when you bow up against somebody? You push them up off you. So, you know, Eugene is in in one corner pleading his case for his wife and Audra is telling Anila on another, on another side, like, you know, um, they were in each other's faces and Toya pushed her face. And so Anila is saying in her confessional, I'm grateful that, you know, it came down on Audra and not me because I was I was going out. Me and Toy were having an issue at that time, too. So at this point, Anila is just happy that her face has not been <laughs> mushed or anything, because at this point, um, Anila is uh, is being very scary at this point because she didn't think that it would get to this level. So Contessa's outside with Toya, you know, and talking about, um, asked her, you know, um, how long she's been married. And she said, well, um, we've been married for 13 years. And, you know, Contessa's telling her, you know, don't let them break up your marriage and blah, blah, blah. You know, don't let don't let this stuff break up your marriage. So she Toya saying, you know, you her and Eugene are very secure in in their marriage. um, And Eugene knows the truth. Toya um, tells, um, <laughs> so Dr. Simone walks up and she tells Dr. Simone, I, I feel like I handle myself very well. And no, you didn't, Toya. You did not handle yourself very well because you should have just walked away. You should have just walked away. Um, I get it when someone is talking about your marriage or lying on you. I can I can see that. But that just was not the venue. Kwa got her family there. You, you, I mean, it's a housewarming holiday soiree, soiree, and you are going to sit up here and go back and forth at this point. If someone should have ushered you out. It probably should have been your husband because you, at, you at that point was ready to. You were, um, you were ready to go at any point. I mean, when I say ready to go, you were ready to get it popping. So you were, you were already there, and so. That's what happened at the party. So now we um so now we go to where Eugene is and Toya talking and they're frustrated about they're frustrated about what happened at Kwai's house. And Eugene says everyone is just trying to pull Toya out of her zen. Eugene, I get it, you gotta back your wife up, but your wife got a lot of mouth. She has been bothering Audra. She has been, every time she turns around, she's talking about Audra's clothes. Now, I know you like, you said you like when Toya got mouth with other people, but that mouth is going to write a check her behind can't cash. Let me tell you that. So, heavily, heavily and Audra arrives at Amila's house. Um, so, Heavily's like, what the hell? You know how Heavily talks. She asks Audra, what the hell happened? So Audra says Toya, you know, is always coming for her every time they get together and she is tired of Toya's lies. So meanwhile, while they're at Anila's house, Dr. Simone, Contessa, and Toya are out to dinner. So Contessa, you know, is asking for a play by play by play at this point. Like, Contessa, where were you? You weren't sitting there. Where, where were you the whole time? I mean, what do you mean you need a play by play? You weren't there? So anyways, she, um, so Toya tells, you know, tells her that Audra, you know, was chest bumping her and she had to, you know, and she just pushed back. So back at Anila's house, Audra tells Heavenly, um, basically she started the whole thing. Heavenly started the whole thing and Heavenly is like, uh-uh. She said, um, Heavenly says she knows, um, 
she wanted her to she wanted Toy to be able to address the whole situation because the people who was talking about it was there. So she felt like this was the best time to address it. It was not the best time to address it. It just was not um, Dr. Heavenly. But okay. So, um, but Heavenly, you know, says in front of both of them, she said she doesn't believe the rumors. And Anila says, well, I don't believe him either. Yes, you do, Anila. You know you believe those rumors. So, um, so Heavenly asked um, if she knew, you know, she asked Anila, you know, if she knew what was going, what, did she plan that, you know, bringing Zayna to the party? And Anila was like, no, because Quan invited Zayna and she just rolled with me. Now, you know, when you ride in the car with somebody, y'all was in that car getting the amped up. So, yeah, say that to her. Yeah, if she say this, I'm going to say that. Y'all know y'all was getting y'all getting y'all stuff together because y'all was y'all knew y'all were going to see Toya and y'all y'all knew that something could possibly pop off and y'all was getting it together. Anita, you ain't fooling me. So, um... Toya, uh, back at the dinner with Toya and Contessa and Simone, Toya says that the rumor was started by Anila and Zayna, according to Heavenly. Simone says Heavenly loves to stir up mess. And Contessa was like, well, the rumor, whoever brings the rumor, that's who started it. Contessa, anything you can say to bring Heavenly and make Heavenly the fall guy, you are going to do it. It is just at this point is getting old. Dr. Contessa is very is getting very old. So um, Simone asked if um, Simone asked if Eugene is okay, and Toya says that Eugene, her and she and Eugene have a relationship where they're open and honest with each other, and if it didn't work, they would still be friends in the long run. So Simone asked if she had a clue if she had any clue about what they were talking about. She's asking Toya this, and Toya was like, no, I thought they were talking about Quad. And so Contessa is like over here like, what? 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 Is, something, is something going on with Quad? So that's when Dr. Simone was like, mm-hmm. They said um, Quad slept with her contractor. Um, and so I'm at the point where when she says, oh, well, Quad slept with her contractor, so what? Quad is single. What's the point? So that's when Toya pipes in and she was like, well, you know, um, that's why Heavenly have, keeps saying that Quad likes married men because I guess she's speculating that this contractor was a married man. Now, Heavenly has said many times she does not believe that Quad has slept with no married man and she was just joking. And that's was that video was way before Quad had even did anything. I mean, I, I'm, I could be wrong. I'm feeling that that video was old, like really old before Quad even d did anything with a contractor as far as her new home. So I don't know. But anyways, if the man ain't married, Quad is single. She can, she can sleep with whoever she wants to. And if he is married, that's between Quad and her God at the end of the day. So um, Toya brings up that Heavenly always says, you know, that she sleeps with married men on her YouTube. Um, so they show the YouTube again and Contessa says she didn't know anything about that. Toya says she's surprised. Um, <laughs> so Toya said, you know, she isn't surprised that Kawhi would, you know, sleep with a contractor, you know, for free tile. Toya, I'm telling you, this this reunion is going to be off the chain because I'm pretty sure when Kwai saw that, she was like, oh yeah, bet, bet. Because I believe that they try to make Kwai seem like she is like this hussy <laughs> all the time, especially not the fact that she's single. They are really trying to make Kwai look like she is just out here in these streets, just laying low and spreading it wide. So Dr. Karen, Dr. Scott, and Dr. Damon are seeing their patients, and they all appear to have a great bedside manner with their patients. So, and I love to see, you know, Black doctors, you know, doctors of color being, you know, so, you know, good with their patients, because I'm telling you, I've been around doctors all of my life, and everybody ain't like that. Everybody is not like that. So I, I enjoy seeing that. 
So as Anila is washing dishes at the home, her mother walks in and she says she's so tired in Anila's house because of the walking up and down the stairs. I'm telling you, Anila's mom is a trip. She is definitely, she, I think her mom is probably lazier than Anila. And Anila gets it honestly. So um, Anila talks to her mom and just tells her, you know, this isn't working out. Anila in her mind was looking for another Miss Gomez. And Anila, you should have known, Dr. Kieran told you, um, your mom is not like Miss Gomez. So why did you even try to bring your mom in a scenario to stress your own self out? But here we are. So um, I'm out. so Anila's mom says, you know, I'm trying to train your kids to pick up after themselves. Um, so Anila is saying that, you know, they just need space. And, you know, Anila's mom stomps off talking about, well, I'll go back to Savannah, Georgia. Child, I'm telling you, my grandma always said there cannot be two queens in the castle. So when you are of a certain age, it's just it's very difficult to try to live with your mom. It really, really is. So Contessa goes to her personal trainer and she gets ready for her competition. Um, she learns how to walk and pose for the competition. Nothing really there. She, you know, making these little comments about her um, the trainer who was trying to teach her to walk. Uh, like I said, I'm not buying this competition storyline. I don't even know why we're even talking about it. I actually forgot about the storyline, but here we are. But moving on. So Quad is making stakes, um, um, for, and Mason is giving her the business as usual. I love when Mason and her and Quad go at each other because they just have this cute little dynamic, and he is just so country and just cute, and he's so lovable, and he's so and he's witty. He's very quick, so he might get that from his aunt Quad. So yeah, it's really cute to watch. So Mason's mom Monica arrives to the house, and they, you know. He opens the door for his mom, and it's very, like, you would think he would be like, mommy, but it wasn't like that. He was just kind of, like, greeting her, like, I, if they didn't say that that was Mason's mom, I wouldn't have known it. Um, so they, they're, they're celebrating Kwai's brother, Quentin's birthday, and um, so Quad acknowledges that she and um, Mason's mother, Monica, have had a lot of ups and downs. They reflect back to when um, Quad was married to Dr. G and they were living in the house um, with Mason when he was really, really young. And, you know, they had some ups and downs, but they are in a good place right now. So um, they eat and they share stories about Quentin. And so they walk out um, to Quad's pool area, her resort area, and they let off lanterns in remembrance of her brother, Quentin. I thought that was so amazing. Um, I did the same thing after my husband. I didn't do the lanterns, but I did balloons um, after my husband passed. And it's just, I don't know, it's just symbolic. And it just makes you feel like, you you know, they're still there and you're still celebrating their birthday and they're still there with you. And I believe that Quad's brother is probably really still around his family a lot. So, yeah. Um, so Dr. Jackie um, interviews for a new um, position in her practice because she wants to spend more time with her husband, which I doubt, um, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's time to spend with Curtis, but okay. But she, nevertheless, Dr. Jackie is wanting to cut back on her hours because she never, you know, she's working all the time nine to five, she's always worked that. Um, Dr. Heavenly always talks about how she doesn't work on, I think she maybe worked three days out the week and she gets off early. So yeah, Dr. Jackie is looking for more of a softer life. And I'm with you, Dr. Jackie, because I want a soft life too. And I'm going to be manifesting that soft life. So she interviews Dr. Bullard to um, possibly join her practice. And Dr. Bullard, Bullard is really pretty. She answered the interview questions beautifully. And um, so I'm pretty sure she will get hired for Dr. Jackie's um, practice. And I think she might even make a good, um, good medicine wife. I mean, a good medicine, you know, be a cast on, casted on married to medicine because she's really pretty. She has a husband and she has a child. So I don't know, we'll see. 
So Anila goes to Dr. Kieran's office to get feelers because she feels like her mom has aged her since he's, she's been there. So she gets to fillers in her cheeks and wherever filler goes. And she tells Dr. Kieran they got to figure out a way of getting her mom out of the house. Dr. Kieran is basically like, I told you not to even do that in the beginning. Like, so Anila says that, you know, well, you were right. So Dr. Kieran is like, roll the tape back because I need, I need this as proof that I was right. And everybody knew that, Anila. Everybody knew that bringing your mama to your house was not a good, good move on, on y'all's behalf. So Dr. Karen has a bright idea. Well, we need to do what we need to do to get we to get um, Ms. Gomez to come back. Leave Ms. Gomez where she is. Leave Ms. Gomez with her family. She is fine where she is. They're trying. Dr. Karen and Anila is like we we'll get her a car. We'll get her a bed. Whatever we have to do to bring Ms. Gomez back. Ms. Gomez, hello, Ms. Gomez. If you can hear me, do not come back. Do not come back and live with them. They are going to work you like a, a mule. No, ma'am. You have been free. Do not go back into ens enslavement. No, Ms. G Ms. Gomez. No. It's just like, <sighs> Anila, there is another woman out there that can watch over your children just as good as Ms. Gomez. Ms. Gomez didn't give you any um like recommendations on people. Like, Stop bothering Ms. Gomez. Ms. Gomez is in retirement. She wants to take care of her own family at this point. She's tired of taking care of your family, Anila. Leave Ms. Gomez alone. So at this point, um, it flashes to um, Anila has been robbed, and that has been all over the blogs that Anila had experienced um, a robbery at her home. They took all of her jewel, a lot of her jewelry, memorabilia, stuff that has been passed out from generation to generation. I'm not really sure if they have been caught yet, but um, yeah, it was it definitely was circulating on all of the blogs when Anila got robbed, and that seems to be a trend that's going on amongst the Bravo celebrities and you know some some you know regular people celebrities who post their wealth on Instagram or whatever. They're starting, people are starting to find out where you live and are robbing you. So yeah, it's a cautionary tale to not really show, you know, a lot of your home um, online because it's becoming really dangerous for these people. So Quad um, is talking to Dr. Heavenly and she, on FaceTime and she's telling Dr. Heavenly that, you know, Anila was in shambles um, and Heavenly just says that she was thankful that they went home and Quad agrees because if Dr. Kieran was trying to defend his family, he could have gotten hurt. The kids could have gotten hurt. Anila could have got. It could have just been bad all the way around. So it's um it's very good that they were not present during the time because who knows what would happen. It could have been something like what Dorit had to experience. And I just mm -mm. yeah no it's that's that's hard to deal with. And the fact that um. Anila, you know, she posted, you know, about it on Instagram and she said hashtag accountability. So I don't know if she feels like it's an inside job, but I mean, I can see why, because most of the people on the cast were saying like, well, she lives in a gated community. Dr. Eugene even made mention like these people had to drive past 50 big houses before they got to Anila's house. So it definitely had to be personal. Um, that they went specifically to go to Anila's house. Um, and, you know, I think that the subdivision that they live in has a guard up front. So someone had to let them in the gate. So that's why they feel like it's something, it had to be someone personally do, that did it um, against Anila. And I would feel the same way. But I'm wondering, like, what 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 is showing security? Like, what what did the security cameras see? Did they see anything? Like, did they cut the cameras? What happened? So, um, Quad is saying, you know, she doesn't find it. She finds it coincidental that two days ago that she and Toy, Anila and Toy, had this big blow up at her house, and now Anila's been robbed. So she finds that very coincidental. So Dr. Heavenly is like, you think it could be Toya? So at this point, the episode is ending. 
um, and it has ended. So we really don't know who could have done this to Anila. Um, hopefully it wasn't anyone in the group. I really don't think Toya would do that. Um, but, you know, you really can't put nothing past nobody, but I really don't think it could have been anyone. So I hope, I don't know if Anila got enemies anywhere else, but it's unfortunate that that happened to her because I know she has to feel violated. I would be scared to live in the house because I'm like, what if they come back? It would, I, my anxiety would be through the roof. So needless to say, that is episode 11. What did you all feel about the um, episode? I thought it was a good episode. I'm giving it about a nine, nine and a half. I enjoyed it. I mean, it had some down moments, but yes, I, I enjoyed the brawl for it all between Anila, Ana, 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 Audra, and Toya. And it's just the whole dynamics of the group. Um, I enjoyed that. Now, they could have took out Dr. Contessa. That's why I'm saying a nine, nine or so. Um, because Dr. Contessa and her whole situation with the competition, I don't know why we still following her on that. Yes, Contessa has a good body and everything, but I just don't want to see anything about a competition, about a good competition. So, again, thank you all for watching. Um, don't forget to like comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification button um, so you'll be notified of any uploads. Um, next video to come out will probably be Married at First Sight. So I um, look forward to that. And um, leave your, your interact, you know, leave some comments down below about how, with who you felt start the whole um, fight between Audra and Toya. Who do you think started it? Was it Audra's fault? Was it Toya's fault? So it's been real. And you know, I always try to leave y'all with this. Following your passion will lead you to fulfillment and there you will find your purpose. That's it, that's all I got, peace.